Cyberpunk 2077 is one of those games that always impresses me on these handhelds. I mean, we're getting an average of 71 FPS running Chimera OS here. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Chimera OS running on the Ioneo Geek. This will also work with the Ioneo 2 with the latest update. Built-in controls and special feature buttons are fully supported with the latest update. And uh, I've been messing around with this for the last couple days. It is really awesome. I've actually got it installed on the Geek and the Ioneo 2. I've just been messing around with it quite a bit, trying to see what kind of performance I can get out of this. And uh, as you can see, we've got a Steam Deck UI interface here. So basically what I've done here is just turn this thing into a more powerful Steam Deck. And if you're not familiar with Chimera OS, you can actually head over to their website. They've got a lot of great information. I would check out the docs section right up here at the top. But uh, this is actually a really awesome operating system. Been updated quite a bit in the last few months. And now we've got, a, you know, the Steam Deck UI here right out of the box. Plus, they've added a desktop interface. Recently, I did a video showing this off on a PC, a cheaper PC, and it performs absolutely amazingly. It's based on Arch, and with the latest update here, they've added support for the Ioneo 2 and Ioneo Geek. So I've been messing around with it on both of these, and the developer has quite a bit planned for this operating system, so I'd definitely uh, at least give it a shot. Go ahead, do a little bit of research. If it's for you, you can definitely try it out on your handheld, PC, or even laptop. I've got Chimera OS installed on the 2TB NVMe SSD that came with the Ioneo Geek I have here. And just going down the settings, you can see that we've got that 6800U. Uh, this model actually has 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's LP DDR5 running at 6400 megahertz. And obviously we've got that Radeon 680M RDNA2 based iGPU. Now, one thing that's been holding a lot of people back from installing Linux on a handheld like this is TDP control and special button functions. Special button functions are programmed into Chimera OS for the Ioneo 2 and the Geek. But when it comes to TDP control, you can use something called Simple TDP Control by a developer over on GitHub who goes by the name Aaron Lee. There's a specific package that you can download for Chimera OS. It also works with other distros, so if you want to install it with Hollow ISO, you can always test it out. But this has been one of the easiest ways that I've found recently to kind of get TDP control on these handhelds. And uh, you can set this up as a non-Steam app and launch it anytime. It'll give you a readout of how you have it set up. We can set a minimum and a maximum and even a start TDP. So if you're looking for control, this is a really awesome application to try out. So I've got the TDP on this set at 5 watts up to 25 watts. So it's going to try to go up to 25 if it needs to. And with all of the games that I'm going to be testing, that's exactly how I've got it set up. I'll have the on-screen overlay and everything like that so we can see what's going on with this system. But I wanted to get into some gameplay to show you how this performs. Okay, so here's Horizon Zero Dawn, 800p, low settings, FSR set to balance. We're getting an average of around 68 FPS. So this is more than playable, and in some cases it does jump up into the 80s. And remember, we've got the TDP set at 25 watts. Uh, 28 is kind of gaming mode in Windows, and it would perform a bit better at 28. And remember, with all of these games, it's best practice to go ahead and turn V-Sync on, just to kind of limit that power draw. But with everything, I've got to unlock just to see how high we can go with it. Next on the list, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, and this is one of those games that's really hit or miss. I can boot this up on the same exact system here next time I start the unit up, and it might perform better, it might perform worse. It's just really odd when it comes to Linux. On a DGPU, it does a really good job, but with integrated graphics, I've had it kind of all over the place. Right now, we're at 800p, low settings, and FSR set to balanced. Doom Eternal, very well optimized game. This is one of my favorite ones to play in Linux because it just works really well. We're at 1080p, medium settings, no resolution scale at all from the operating system or uh, even the game settings. And we're getting an average of 73 FPS. I really do wish that more games use the same engine here because it does perform really well on integrated graphics. Here's God of War at 800p, low settings, FSR set to performance. Now we can actually get a steady 60 out of this if we take FSR to ultra performance, but uh, I really don't like the way it looks like that. 
but with it set up like this, I mean, we're getting really close. I got an average of 56 FPS. It's right there on the edge. With a little more wattage thrown at this APU, we could probably get a steady 60 out of it, at least turn V-Sync on at around 28 watts. Hogwarts Legacy 800p, low settings, FSR set to performance, looking about the same as God of War here. I mean, it's just right there. It's so close to getting us a nice steady 60 out of it. Now, obviously, this is performing much better than it does on the Steam Deck, but we are pulling more wattage here, and obviously, we've got a more expensive unit. Cyberpunk 2077 always amazes me on these integrated graphics. Uh, with these newer updates that CD Projekt Red has put out, we're getting amazing performance. 800p Steam Deck preset, we can get an average of around 71 FPS with this game. I mean, this is one of those that's really playable on the 6800U, and it still looks great at 800p with that Steam Deck preset. And finally here, The Last of Us Part 1. A lot of people have been complaining about the PC performance of this game, and I completely understand. I did a video showing it off uh, running on the Steam Deck day one. We couldn't really even hit a steady 30 with it. But with this setup here, same exact settings I was using, 800p low FSR set to performance, we're getting an average of around 42 FPS. Indoors, we can reach 60 with it, but that doesn't really tell us anything because we're not indoors all the time with this game. So yeah, for a first release that supports the i Neo, this is performing really well, and it's super easy to install. You could actually run this from an external drive just to test it out. You could even run it from a USB drive if you wanted to, but uh, caching those shaders while you're starting up a game would take a while on a USB drive. One thing I'd love to see from any of these Linux distros that works on these handhelds is some type of uh, automatic TDP adjustment. We do have that in Windows with the iNeo and a lot of other 6800U handhelds on the market, but nothing in Linux yet. And I think that's one of the main things holding these handhelds back, just kind of the optimizations for this chipset or the handheld in general when it comes to Linux. Taking the TDP up to 25 watts is great and all, and it will go from, you know, 5 watts or even 3 watts up to 25 when it's needed, but having that automatic adjustment to kind of keep us at that 60 FPS mark would be absolutely amazing. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I was really excited to see that Chimera OS now supports the iNeo 2 and the iNeo Geek, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video. And if you're interested in testing it out, I'll leave a link to the website in the description below. All the information you need to get it up and running on your handheld or PC is over there on the website, so definitely check it out. But uh, if you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running with Chimera OS on the iNeo Geek or the iNeo 2, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.